Expose, I'm your regular host, Tony Akiyomi. Expose is the place where we reveal, unveil, expose information for your transformation. Please tell your friends and neighbors that Expose is streaming live right now and you need to join us. They need to join us because you never can tell. It might just be one piece of information that they would hear today that would turn the table in their favor on their journey to wellness. We believe in Expose that what you need is not more medication but more education. For the best prescription is knowledge. The Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The Bible also says for by knowledge shall the just be delivered. We are here to share knowledge. This is a knowledge based show and today we are honored to have Again with us, like we had during the last episode, my good international guest and expert with us in the house to continue our conversation and our discussion, first on the on-demand device and then on some other aspect of wellness that she touched upon during the last episode. So once again, I'd like to welcome you, Dr. Sylvia Binder, to so Expose. Much. Thank you for having me. We are honored to have you for two episodes. Woo! That's, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for being generous with us with your time. Yeah, we signed off during the last episode looking at a few things relating to the device, the undermed device. You mentioned things about infectious processes and what have you. And I'd like us to look at that, particularly in this season of COVID-19, which is a viral infection. We'd like to talk a bit about that and then also the way I look at you from the interactions we've had so far since we met uh, you said you have a son who is 24 now is it 23 and a daughter is 25 okay. and another son who's 20 so you have 25 23 and 20 I started so early right <laughs> now so that already gives us an idea we can do some math there and find out how old you are <laughs> <laughs> but you're not looking at it. But chronologically you know? only. Yeah, not okay, biological. not biological age. So we want to know your secret. <laughs> we wanted to share some tips with our viewers. This is my daily routine. When I wake up in the morning, this is what I do. When I go to, before I go to bed, this is what I do. Somewhere in the middle, this is what I do. <laughs> this is what I eat, this is what I don't eat. Okay. And all of those things. Just, you know, in summary, to help someone out there in case they want to take a cue, to say, okay, this is exactly how it goes. Then about this device, we're still going to come to it. There are people who are saying, okay, supposing I want to be an undermed practitioner, how do I go about it? How long does it take to train? Mm. What kind of qualifications, educational qualifications do I need before I can train on this? And so on and so forth. So let's begin with your routine. What is your secret? Mm. How do you go about your day okay. to keep healthy, to keep strong? So people can learn one or two things from that. Okay. Thank you for asking such a challenging question. <laughs> will I reveal my secret? Go yes, ahead. I will. I know you will. <laughs> I have no problem with that. Because I want you all to be uh, joyful and filled with love right. and keeping all the fear and, uh, and diseases away from you. So I am actually a very adventurous person. Mm -hmm. And I trust my intuition. Mm -hmm. So... Of course, to keep it simple now, um, I get up in the morning and I like to drink my coffee. The coffee is a wonderful stimulant and there's nothing wrong with coffee. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've learned that here in Nigeria you call tea, which is really hot chocolate. So I mean really coffee. And right. I don't mean some Nestle right. instant. I mean real coffee. coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that cooks for a while, boiling water, right? right? So I love that. I actually prefer, I'm on an intermittent fasting okay. for close to 20 years. Wow. Which, um, I, you know, I prefer eating less than eating too much. Okay. So that's a simple one. Mm -hmm. It will cost you less money. <laughs> <laughs> and it will actually give you more energy. Mm -hmm. So contrary to belief, mm -hmm. you know, unless you are someone who goes to the gym, who is constantly working out and running, and doing, then you need more calories. Okay. But most of us, we have um, normal jobs, I'm saying. I mean, I have a very stressful life, 
But I love my life, so I love my stress, and I'm, I'm coping with it very well. And so I, I'm, I might only drink coffee in the morning and then start to have something to eat, maybe um, at 1 p.m. Mm. And then I stop uh, taking anything as of 7 p.m. Mm. So I would only eat during that With time. With a six-hour window. Yes. But it's actually usually it's an eight-hour window. Okay. Don't eat for 16 hours and eat for eight hours. Right. So that the organs can rest for 16 hours. Mm-hmm. And that means even when you drink coffee, uh, you know, you cannot put milk in it because that increases your uh, your pancreatic enzymes, so your insulin levels. So you don't want to get that going. So it is. Um, so the the trick here is less is more than more. Mm-hmm. And then, um, of course, I try to to move. You know, even walking during COVID nineteen, I, I went crazy <laughs> until my my youngest son. He's very much into exercise and nutrition, and he's amazing. Mm-hmm. And he helps me write, you know, those correct my own newsletters that I publish. Right. Uh, and and he said, look, mom, you can just do stepping in, in your living room. Right. There's only much room. Mm-hmm. Just go and walk, 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 walk. Mm-hmm. So when I'm on the phone now, I, I, ideally I go outside of my apartment, my house, and to walk outside barefoot right. and not bring the negative ion <laughs> into my body right. and I move and uh, and I take care of things that I have to take care of by phone. So movement is important and also want to tell you, I notice this, uh, I'm in, in the middle of a, of a holy place, but I tell you sexuality is very important. So to touch, and that doesn't mean only one thing, that means to touch, to kiss, to hug, to love, to show appreciation. To, to show your love through your eyes is all important. And to not um, put that under the rug is important. We are human beings. We like to eat and we like to, uh, to make love and whatever that means. You know, I keep it very open now. Right. And so that is an important element. I love to laugh a lot. I love music and dancing. I love to dance and I miss it during COVID-19 when those clubs are not open. Can you believe it? That is so good for, for health, the movement again. And um, I do like a little bit of red wine, but not much, a little bit, you know, and I like the bitter cola. And I like uh, when I, it doesn't always have to be solid food, you know, I like strange food combinations. Maybe I just eat uh, lentils or just have a a tomato salad with fresh tomatoes, of course, from the market, with um, maybe some uh, um, olives. Some onions, I love onions, I right. love garlic, it's always in most of my food. Mm. Onions typically with uh, raw and garlic uh, uh, cooked. I love hummus, I love uh, uh, very limited foods, but very wholesome. Right. I love avocados. Mm. And so fruit is wonderful, mixing avocado fat with, uh, with a water lemon. Uh, don't do too much banana because it's very sweet mm. and the, the carbs are very much on it. So complex carbs is, um, right. is the idea, and uh, vegetables, primarily vegetables, mm-hmm. and then the food, and food only in the morning, not at night time. So what else can I say? I love nature. Right. Even just looking at trees, I communicate with trees. You may call me a lunatic, and that's fine by me, <laughs> but trees have a language, and if you tune into it, even when you tune into birds singing, you can stop a headache like this, mm-hmm. when you tune into the vibration of a bird chirping. So watch out what's around you. Connect with nature since we are part of nature. Mm. Be mindful and, uh, and breathe. Breathing is very important. Conscious breathing. Mm. Is that good? That was right, part? right. Thank you. you. You've talked on quite a number of things that, um, I mean, each one of them could serve as another episode. <laughs> <laughs> and we could do that by Zoom. <laughs> okay, if yeah, people don't, don't get tired of me, of right, course. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, you talk, talked about, you talked on coffee, and we have different schools of thoughts on coffee. Somebody asked me, uh, I think earlier today, he asked me and said, uh, do you take coffee? I'm not a coffee person. I said, I take coffee from the back rather than from the front. Oh, enema. <laughs> enema. Very healthy. It's wonderful. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but definitely I told the guy, I said, uh, I've read some uh, articles and studies that have been done for those who have liver inflammation and elevated liver enzymes, that coffee actually helps. Do you agree with that thought? 
Um, I agree, and then it's probably better to have it uh, through an enema. Okay. Um, what we need to respect, you know, nutrition is not nutrition in different cultures. Right. So we need to think about well, where was my DNA for the past three generations, right. or even longer. And coffee wasn't part of Africa's generation, not mm -hmm. with some part of Africa, some part, yeah, right. Kenya, being right. there, but not Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Um, also, cow milk was not ever. Right. Also, not in Asia. So we need to look at our hereditary right. roots to see well, what makes sense to my nutrition mm. to personalize it again. Right. So I would say for those Africans listening from Nigeria, probably coffee is not such a good idea for you. Uh, hot chocolate also is not such a good idea for you. Mm. And Lipton tea is also not such a good idea for you, because mm -hmm. that came with English, <laughs> right. and it's not the best the quality of tea, mm -hmm. okay? So, but when you talk to me, I'm European based, right? My mother is Greek, my father is German, so of course for me, it is an ideal food. Right. It is a wonderful food and it fills you, mm -hmm. it's nice. It also helps you be more creative. Mm -hmm. It uh, increases your cortisol level, so you don't want to drink it at night. Right. So it helps you to awaken. Right. And the same can happen with when you drink. For you guys, it will be maybe water mm. with lemon squeezed in. Right. Because that also activates you mm. and, and makes you uh, ready for the day. And it has, you know, re reduction of inflammation. Mm. And, you know, coffee is used uh, uh, in homeopathy in order right. to, to focus you better. So you know, there's, um, there's a good aspect right. to coffee for sure. Right. Then you mentioned eating less. Less is better than more. You mentioned intermittent fasting. I know quite a number of people know about intermittent fasting, but maybe not everybody. So, would you say a word about sure. intermittent fasting? Yes, it's very easy. So, you would eat for eight hours a day, and not that doesn't mean for eight hours straight. <laughs> <ladies and gentlemen. laughs> We eat for eight hours and we stop for sixteen hours. So very simple. Out of a twenty-four hour day. Out of a twenty-four hour day. So you divide day. the day into two slots. That's right. Sixteen hours, no food. Yes. Then within eighteen hours, that's when. You, how many times do you eat within those eighteen hours? I mean, and those eight, eight hours, rather. Yes. So eight hours, you can eat whenever you want. How many times? Several times. Yes, twice, several times. Right? Twice. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and so you can have a warm meal and a, and a cold, you can have a shake, you can have whatever you want. Right. But uh, for me, so it could be like an 11 a.m. to a 7 p.m. Yeah, right. And then, uh, because you don't want to eat too close to going to sleep. Okay. Also, what is very important, and, and I, I, I urge you, Nigerians, you know, your, your forefathers did not fry their food. <laughs> and that's why we have so much diabetes. Right. In this country, and as I said before in the lecture, for me, diabetes is not a disease. Mm -hmm. It is a, it is a, a problematic, uh, what would say, lifestyle. Right. So you're eating the wrong foods that cause you to have lifestyle consequences we call diabetes too. Mm -hmm. You can change that over time, mm -hmm. and and you will not need your medication and your diabetic medication. So. Uh, so it's very simple to <coughs> do the uh, intermittent fasting. You can do water all the time, of course. You can even do the lemon in the water, because right. that's fine. Right. Lemons turn alkaline inside the body, so it's not that we're adding to the acidity. We're actually turning the acidity into alkalinity. Right. Now, there, there used to be this axiom that used to say, eat breakfast like a king. I know and so on and so forth. Now, intermittent fasting, you're saying don't eat anything until 11 a.m. or thereabouts, and so you start eating from 11 a.m. and you stop eating by 7 p.m., or if you started at 10 a.m., you stop at 6 p.m. Right. What do you have to say to that axiom? Eat breakfast like a king. Well, it continues, right? Eat breakfast like a king, and then I guess whatever comes next, the prince, I guess, and for then, lunch, and then still we're like eating. A popper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that I don't know who came up with that. 
maybe some very bored people that were sitting in a castle and 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 fat was a nice thing. Obesity was an attractive thing. You know, people I, people say that as if <laughs> as if it's from the Bible. <laughs> Oh, that, that's, yeah. I mean, it's not we from the Bible, but the what, Bible. what I mean is people are so persuaded that that is it, that is the science. Oh, that I'm so and, sorry. And <laughs> you, you know, always you have to provoke and you have to look question behind and, and question, question <laughs> yes, and look at different fields of study and thought. Right. And different philosophies, different cultures have different thought. And that's why for me it was always important that I not only study naturopathic medicine, but also that I study anthroposophical medicine, or that I study the, uh, the emotional aspects of that, you know, different TCM, right. different right. cultures. Because only because we have one culture doesn't mean we know it all. Right. And even if we have all the cultures, we still don't know it all. Right. As a matter of fact, we know very little. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. And that's what we should learn all the time. Mm -hmm. So when you start eating breakfast, you increase your insulin levels. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's the problem because it's going to be making you hungry. Mm -hmm. By lunchtime, you will need food again, mm -hmm. and then again. So it's better to train your body that you do not need the food. Right. Because look, most people in Nigeria they could live happily ever after for one year, not touching and putting one type of food into their body. <laughs> There's so much reserve. So much reserve <laughs> on the plate. And Fatty deposits. Right. <laughs> and you know when you eat more, it's, you know, where's it going? I mean... So we're going more and more and more. And the warehouse gets enlarged, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry <laughs> to say. So it is important to understand that we have to change our philosophy, our um, parameters. What has, has worked in the 15th century may not be working in the 21st century. Right. I mean, you want evolution or you want to keep on crawling? Mm -hmm. We can't keep on crawling. No cars. No, right. <laughs> no internet. At that time. <laughs> so yeah. you like the internet, but you don't like fasting? Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> In those days when they ate, you know, like kings during breakfast, I mean, my, my parents who eat a very big meal for breakfast, but then they're heading for the farm. And they do, they do peace and farming, not mechanized farming. Right. They have to walk and break a sweat, you know, and burn the calories and, you know, but we want to eat as they ate, and yet we don't do what they did. Bravo. And so they put it, it's exactly right. 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 They had different work. Right. They had labor. They needed right. the calories right. to have the energy to do what they were doing. That's right. So, and today, most of us, we walk, maybe even, we drive mm -hmm. and we sit. Right. So what what right do we have? I mean, so it's, a, it's a, as you said, it's math. Mm -hmm. What what we use is what we need, mm -hmm. and not beyond that. Right. So if we have a normal day, maybe we only need fifteen hundred calories, mm -hmm. and that's done with if you eat four bananas. Right. <laughs> four bananas per day. How many bananas? Right. Have you eaten today? <laughs> and it's very funny those Nigerians that are warm, 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 warm. And for us, you know, in German, it's like one, one banana. <laughs> okay. You also talked about, you know, another subject which I, I, I think we should be looking at, you know, for another episode, which is which is grounding or earthing. Oh yes. So you, true. you know, walking barefoot. What does that do? You talked about. Um, you know, making contact with the ground. What type of ground? Any surface or just bare earth or grass or concrete or wood or carpet? What kind of contact and what benefits do we derive from that? I'm actually doing a book that has a chapter on grounding, but I just want you to share some thoughts okay. with our friends. Well, actually, you know, I'm, I'm very connected in the world with wonderful people. They're out of the box, most, most of them, if not all. Some would call them crazy, which is wonderful, because who wants to be normal? Who wants to be called normal? And uh, one of these, uh, one of the family is a Sinatra family. Right. They are very dear friends of mine. And uh, Step Sinatra is the son of Dr. Steven Sinatra. Oh, you know Dr. Steven Sinatra? Oh, of course. Like, I've read his books. Yeah. Tell him I've read his books. And I love his work. My, Thank oh, you. my, oh, Thank my. You. Dr. Steven Sinatra. <laughs> yes, wonderful man. Oh, great. We know, we've known each other 16 years at least. My goodness, and then I you have to introduce me to him now. I will. <laughs> I will find him somewhere. <laughs> All right. 
and and he um well his son you know he I helped his son who almost died and and then I, I urged for a long time that the son moves to Germany which he ended up doing moving to us right in uh, when I was in Germany still and he was not far from the house and and that, and so anyways a long story short we are still very much in contact of mm. course uh, he's traveling now he's has followed my advice being in Greece because mm. Greece has a very special right. Uh, magnetic grid, and you'll see soon. Right. He will be here. Mm. He's already saying, "Oh, you're doing something," because he knows Germany was stealing. Then we elevated to Greece, and right. then of course the ultimate exposed, beautiful passion. I'm waiting. Yes. Right. And and amazing is the planet of Africa. Wow. <laughs> You got it. Wow. I was waiting to hear that. Right? <laughs> Nigeria, for me, it, it's such a different vibration. It's like I don't even have to take my shoes off. I'm already in the vibration. <laughs> it's amazing. Look, here comes this um, this Westerner, right? And I didn't even want to be here. Just I was called. You know, I helped the family in Enugu, and they invited me, so I came. And then, and from there, the story unfolded. <laughs> And it was just uh, that vibration from the people, mm. from the soil, mm. that red soil, mm. right, that in itself, and the trees and, and, and the nature and the rocks, mm. amazing. I'm sure you have the big rocks, wow. it's just beautiful. I tell so, folks, we have, we have 12 months summer in Nigeria. We have true. wet summer and dry summer. <laughs> very true. And, and being here in Lagos, of course, you always have wind. Right. It can get very dry, mm -hmm. really dry in Abuja right. or in Enugu. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm actually part of the advisory board members um, of uh, Earth, what's it called, Grounded. Right. Dot com. Right. And uh, Step Sinatra founded that. And uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Stephen Sinatra, he actually worked very closely with Clint Obert, okay. who wrote the book on Earthing. So right. you wanna. Get that reference. Right, that would be great. Yeah, uh, so it's Earthing, um, and um, Sinatra wrote a chapter on it. So when you take off your shoes, the problem with all of our shoes today is because we want it sustainable, right? We want these shoes to last for a long time. Right. Otherwise, you could just wear leather, right. like cow leather, leather, like we use our ancestors did. Okay. And to protect us, but most of them really didn't have anything on their feet for most of uh, humanity. Mm -hmm. And that was that they, yes, they died earlier, but there's different reasons, you know, we had wild animals, we had a different lifestyle, mm -hmm. and so, but when we connect to the earth, and that can be sand, rock, stone, anything really, but it has to be connected to the Directly. earth in, in your first floor right. of the house, mm -hmm. if it is not sealed off. Right. So asphalt would not work. Okay. Because that's disconnecting. That the, the, the Earth's uh, vibration, the frequencies right. uh, that actually bring, and they, they talk about the Schumann frequency, 7.8 hertz, mm -hmm. that's not the only, you know, there's a frequency coming out and there's a frequency meeting it. So there's the, always think about this is not only one way. Right. But what happens is negative ions are right. entering our biology, the feet. And on the top of the feet, you know, on the top of your foot, right. you have a meridian or an acupuncture point, an ending of a meridian, that's the kidney meridian. Right. So it's feeding into that very important meridian mm. and, and helping us to fight inflammation just by taking off our shoes. Right. And there's a, there's a PubMed article on that. Okay. And, um, and also it gives us energy. So the electrons, of course. Uh, an, an, an energy donator. Great. We'll be back shortly. We'll take a little break and continue with this conversation on earthing and negative ions and what have you because when I first got into this, I was a little bit taken aback. I was wondering, what's all this about? But reading further, I gained insight and understand, understanding and I found out that that's very wonderful and terrific. I go to the beach sometimes and just walk barefoot, you know, and it's a wonderful feeling, okay? We'll be back shortly after the break.
My name is Olani K. Aladishui, a graduate of Rafa Institute of Healthy Living, a school run by Reverend Tony Akiyemi, where we are taught how to take care of our health using basic healthy living principles. My coming into contact with the school has changed my life for the better. Prior to that time, I had been diagnosed of arthritis, I had pains all over me, I had difficulty in breathing. But since I decided to take the principles taught in the school seriously and I followed them, I discovered that my health has improved, I am free of pain, my breathing has stabilized to such an extent that I can run a gym. Can you beat that? So, I want to invite you. Come, join us at Rafa Institute of Healthy Living. Let's learn together how to reverse supposedly irreversible diseases using nutrition and lifestyle, all our basic principles. Your life will not remain the same again. Welcome back to Expose. I'm your regular host, Tony Akiyemi. This happens every Monday, 8 p.m. Nigerian time, simultaneously on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Do press the subscribe button to join us on YouTube, as well as the notification button. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. There's so much to learn free of charge on our journey to health. We believe that what you need is not more medication, but more education. For the best prescription is knowledge. And we are honored to have with us, live in Lagos, Nigeria, West Africa, Dr. Sylvia Binda of the Binda Institute for Personalized Medicine. We've been having a conversation around so many wonderful subjects and topics as they just come naturally in our discussion. We've been talking about grounding, making direct contact with the earth. That may sound primitive, that may sound a little bit way back, but then, wait a minute, how much does it cost to do that? And what harm does that bring? One of the things I tell people is that some of these unconventional protocols are harmless even when they are not helpful. I mean, if I walk barefoot, even if it doesn't help me, at least it won't harm me. So it's worth trying. But not to talk of the fact that there is science behind this. A lot of studies have been done, published in reputable international peer-reviewed journals. And so we're having this discussion today around grounding or earthing we have Dr. Binda shedding light on that. So would you like to tell us one more time, when you go to the beach, for example, mm -hmm. and you walk barefoot by the beach, you talk about negative ions. What exactly would negative ions do in our system, for example? What changes, what, what transformation, what dynamics takes place within my body when those negative ions get into my system? What is it going to change? What transformation is going to happen? Negative ions will help give us energy to fight free radicals. Right. And free radicals, is, you don't want to have many free radicals, so you know, it, it's, um, it's a side effect of inflammation. Mm -hmm. And we want to, of course, reduce inflammation. Right. Because inflammation leads to pain and to uh, other diseases. So we want to reduce inflammation as much as possible. So when we walk on the on the sand, you know, we we're not only walking barefoot on the sand and getting the negative ions, we're also getting minerals from the sand. Okay, it's fully Absorbed loaded through the soles of the feet. Well, it's at least in the in the soles. Right. But the negative ions travel throughout the whole system system because of the energy exchange right. that is taking place. Uh, or when I now take my body into the ocean water, right. you know, our blood is very similar to sea wow. water. Wow. So I go in and now I'm, this is very healing because you know, the skin is not just an organ that protects us. It is a filtering system. Right. That's why when we have some medication, we put it on a screen, right? Right, right. And it will infiltrate into the organs, into the bloodstream. So, Swimming in the ocean, in a, in a, in a clean ocean, with all the plastic and everything, and the oil maybe here in the port might not be the most ideal, because they're dumping probably oil. Right, so, right. But that's very healing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and just 
being part of the element of nature. Mm -hmm. I think that is a very essential and, and, and being uh, very primitive actually mm -hmm. is not a negative, but mm -hmm. it is the most positive mm -hmm. because primitive means whatever makes sense. <laughs> right? Simple. And it's simple, doesn't Not have to cost much. Anyway. <laughs> yes, I don't have to boost my ego to do something or explain something I don't really understand myself. Right. <laughs> so, why not just keep all of that, you know, nobody needs that. Right. Let's just be as practical as possible. Mm -hmm. So, it, you can never lose in grounding, even on, on just putting your feet on, a, on rock, mm -hmm. on stone, on even cement. It's okay, you don't have to walk, but walking will be even better. Right. Or grassy areas, right. roots, you know, whatever is connected to you. Mm. Beautiful, giving you energy and fighting insulation. Right, so for example, uh, if I wake up in the morning, I have a little lawn uh, at the back of my house, I can just wear my shorts, expose most part of my body, take early morning sunshine, well, my bare feet are touching the ground on the grass and maybe I'm listening to some music right there or whatever. I can be combining a number of That's natural right. things together. That's Nothing right. costs money right. and yet it's bringing all of these benefits to my body. Now, I read a book that talked about the red blood cells kind of plumbing together like a silhouette. When you do grounding and you do light blood analysis, mm. It actually helps declustering the red and then increases the oxygen carrying capacity. That's correct. What do you have to say to that? Yes, I agree with that. Right. And it's also with before and after on the mat. Okay. Right? Very similar uh, responses, electrons are, are being activated, you know. Right. Energy transfer taking place differently, ATP is being released, and energy of the cell, the mitochondria is releasing mm -hmm. more energy because of. Uh, other areas are being uh, taken care of, mm -hmm. so that the energy is not wasted into having to fight a hundred inflammation sites in the body, right? Because right? right. that's always happening. Okay. It's a construction site. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. Now, in, in mentioning your daily routine in the beginning, I haven't forgotten, <laughs> you mentioned two other critical things. You mentioned relationships, touching and showing love and all of those, and then you also mentioned music and dancing, okay, as part of those things that are, I call them cheap, unconventional protocols. <laughs> <laughs> they're cheap, they're unconventional. So primitive. They're normal, very primitive. How wonderful. Normally not prescribed when you go into those elegant, sophisticated environments for treatments. Nobody mentions those things, no. but yet these are things that we can do on a daily basis, on a routine basis, that add value to our health profile. So I also read an article uh, that talked about how elderly, I mean senior citizens, that took to dancing as part of their health strategy, mm -hmm. actually MS, with imaging example. in their brains, and they mm -hmm. began to see their brains that were already shrinking, That's right. you know, kind of growing back and becoming like younger mm -hmm. and increasing in capacity, kind of warding off dementia and what have you. That's right. What do you say to that? I mean, I'm all for it. Right. It makes sense. Why? Because our choice for life, our sex, is being stimulated. Right. And we become more childlike. There's this inner child within us. Mm. And if we, we want to be serious and, and, and always prove ourselves and be negative and, <laughs> and cynical and skeptical, and there's a, there's a place for skepticism, but, but then you study and you find out and, and you get to the root of something. But, but why give up on our curiosity, on our appreciation for, for life? Mm. And that usually is very simple. Right. It's only man that makes it complicated. <laughs> right. And of course, this biology is it's very complicated, mm -hmm. and and to understand it, it, it takes, of course, uh, it, it takes some learning and some experience. And, mm -hmm. But if we keep things to a very minimal, mm -hmm. uh, not reductionist, because that's the problem. The, the you know the reductionist, the allopathic medical mm -hmm. physicians. But if we keep it to a way of we don't have to go back to cave age. Mm -hmm. But we need to remain human. Right. 
I mean, you want to be healthy, you want to have strength, you want to be vibrating, but you don't want to be human, you don't want to be out in the sun, you don't, you were filling your face with the makeup and with, with the long eyelashes and fake hair and whatever else, and if, if that's not you, mm-hmm. why not be you? Mm-hmm. Let's do you, let's do, or let's do me, mm-hmm. and you do you. Right. And so that means I, I should be part of a natural structure. Mm-hmm and not think that cows are there and I am here not superior. <laughs> Nonsense. Who said that? <laughs> so I hope I made my point clear. Right, right. In, in flowing better, in being more humble. Mm-hmm. You know, humility is an important one. Mm-hmm. And while being humble, but also being uh, knowing who you are. Mm-hmm. Take charge right. and strike and strike and move forward mm-hmm. and, and go with your passion. Good. So joy happiness, you know, and all adventure. of those things. Adventure. Adventure. Because that right. means you're overcoming your own fear. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not easy. Right, right. So you're always pushing a little bit more, right. a little bit more. And that going beyond of what you are afraid of mm-hmm. will actually open up a whole new world mm-hmm. of yourself. You didn't notice right. about yourself mm-hmm. and about the world in general. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So true. I mean, even in the Bible, I mean, we saw music therapy when Saul, King Saul, was afflicted with evil spirits, and David played music, and um, the king got better. The Bible also says, "The joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy brings strength." In in Proverbs seventeen twenty two, the Bible says, "It says a merry heart when your heart is merry and happy, that it does good like medicine." A it has a happy. different vibration. That's right, yeah. So the happiness, you know, the, the sound of, of a flute, of a violin, mm-hmm. a singing, that frequency. Right. The singing of a bird, that frequency. That's why it's healing. in Lunabai, babies, yes. you sing for babies yes. and they just sleep off. That's right. You know, that's music therapy. <laughs> it is. And it's so beautiful. Even right. for children that have autism, for example, mm-hmm. or ADD, ADHD. Mm-hmm. You know, they can't focus properly. Right. When you play classical music for them, and, and other types of music, like uh, here, maybe some um, African music is different. Right. You know, uh, or for the older uh, generations, we are older people. You play what they listened to when they were younger. Mm-hmm. It will bring their memories back. Right. That the memories are fading because of old timers, right? Mm-hmm. But now as they dance, they listen. These memories are being evoked. Right. And so it has a, a, a psychological point of view mm-hmm. that then filters through the, uh, the, the physiology. And because the, the zest and will for life will increase they will want to be alive again. Who wants to be a vegetable on a, on a couch? <laughs> Nobody. Right. We want to be alive and we want to move and we want to hear and, 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 and be with other people. Mm-hmm. That's the whole problem with COVID-19, right? <laughs> the sheltering. Oh yeah. my goodness, don't get me started no. on that. We need another session <laughs> for that one. <laughs> now that you brought this COVID-19 matter up, I think we need to say a word or two about that. First of all, locking people down indoors, not allowing them to go outdoors for sunshine exposure, for vitamin D, for social interaction, we're talking social distancing and whatever. Of course we know that precautions have to be taken in order not to put one self in harm's way. But some of those guidelines that have been given to us globally do they make sense? Do they make scientific sense? No. And nobody's listening to the scientists. They're, <laughs> they're only listening to the politicians and not their fault. Because the politicians are listening to the wrong people that, that claim that they know better than, than many of the other people that are out there that have evidence. Mm. And, I, want, and I, I get very angry mm. if, I, if I think about it because it's so ridiculous. And pardon me, please. You have to find your own truth. But I was just flying from Abuja to Lagos. In the waiting area, we have to sit one seat apart because of social distancing. And then we get to the plane and we're all sitting next to each other in a very small environment. <laughs> Do you think that that makes sense? Ridiculous. <laughs> so, I mean, where is the logical, practical thinking? So it's just to be politically correct out there. That is correct. Well, it seems like. <laughs> and so when you lock people away, 
you know, their immune system will actually deteriorate because they're indoors, they're not outside, they're not in nature, they're not with other people. Mm-hmm. The immune system doesn't build when we constantly put uh, uh, hand soap and uh, detergent or, and the whatever antimicrobial right. uh, hand gels and and, and co- in combination with a mask, mm-hmm. you now do you really think that a virus is not going to penetrate that mask? <laughs> Do you really think that you know what you're talking about mm-hmm. when you say this will protect you? Well, it may be, of course, when you are having a cough. Mm-hmm. And you, of course, psychologically, you don't want to stand next to somebody who is coughing at you. Right. But that doesn't mean that the virus is not going to shoot out as that person is projecting a cough for his knee mm-hmm. <laughs> through the mask. And, when, and, and so... Um, viruses trap every virus is different and not only do you have virus you have bacteria, you have all kinds of other microbes that are constantly floating inside of us around us when you, when you have that mask on the problem is that you are, you are confining your own oxygen intake mm-hmm. further, uh, furthering the uh, restriction of the immune system and you are breathing in CO2 Mm. which is not ideal. Mm. And then you often cannot really see properly, so maybe you fall now because it's not COVID-19, mm. but it's a mask that made you fall. <laughs> <laughs> now, now w- would there be a time that you think that a mask would be necessary? I mean, at what point in time would an individual, for example, need to put on a mask? I'm not sure. I don't know. You can take that mask and put it as a headpiece if you want. Because it's not going to do what they're saying it's, it's doing for you. Um, and, and that is because virus is way too small not to penetrate, especially cloth masks. Right. And then, you know, we wear it all the time. So it goes into the, goes on the dining room table, we pick it up again, we put it on, it goes on to the <laughs> toilet, uh, wherever you, the sink, and then you put it back on, it goes on to uh, your handbag, and then, so hello? You don't think you're going to be putting that, actually forcing that virus? <laughs> <laughs> against so, your so face. What, what would you say that a, a person needs to do, for example, to stay safe during this pandemic? I what, what precautions yes. should an individual take? I believe you should uh, not be fearful. You should know that the human body is designed in a way that when you are exposed, mm-hmm. expose, when you're exposed <laughs> to virus, bacteria, uh, parasites, etc., that, that the body will be able, the immune system will be able to get trained. So if we actually have COVID-19, and then our bodies, most of, our, and most of us have it, or had it already, our bodies will actually, the immune system will get trained. We don't need a vaccine when we're out there and we're contracting it, so to speak. And we're going through some of the symptoms and we're resting when we have symptoms. Mm-hmm. And we're taking vitamin C and we're in the sunlight or we're taking P3 supplementation and magnesium and maybe zinc and selenium. And, and or we just eat all the right. But when we are down, we should stay down. We should rest. When we have, look in Europe, in, in North America, we go through our four seasons. We have the, um, we have influenza. A, SARS virus, which is a COVID-19, is a SARS virus. We have it in February, that's the flu season, and November. And so we know that when we, and, and many more thousand people died four years ago of SARS virus from flu uh, co-infections, because we didn't measure everybody, right? right? So a statistician would say, hey people, you are taking, uh, you, you're measuring people if they have COVID-19 and you're comparing it to what? Where is the baseline? Right. We have never done that before. Mm-hmm. How can you say the numbers are? What numbers? Mm-hmm. What numbers are? Up? Have we ever tested people if they have a flu mm-hmm. that's called SARS? Right. No. Right. We just looked at the symptoms and we say, you have to flu. Right. Now stay home, drink your hot tea, don't eat, you know, don't, don't, as Hippocrates said, uh, uh, let food be our medicine, but he also said, uh, do not feed thy disease. Right. So, eat less, just have soup, of beef broth, for example. That is good. Um, so, 
Does it make sense um, to, to wear the mask? No, it does not. You need to expose yourself, train your immune system, and, and then your immune system will overcome it. If you're an immune compromised person, then it's a story is different. I'm talking to the population of most of us who are not immune compromised. Then it would be ideal for that individual to still go outside, expose yourself to nature, but, but be restricted with touching people and, and uh, the mask may not help either. I'm sorry. Because again, when you wear that mask, you're restricting the oxygen that is necessary for you to be healthy and less inflamed. So I'm not a fan. So when do physicians wear masks? Have you asked yourself right. that question? Yeah. 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 They wear the mask to protect the patient when they're working on them in surgery. They're not wearing the mask to protect themselves from the patient. Right. So, do you see? This makes no sense. Mm -hmm. And they're only wearing the mask because what if they cough? What if they spit? What if they sneeze and it falls into the liver? That might not be such a good idea because there could, there could be some virus or right. bacteria, but it's not when we're interacting with one another. Why is it okay to sit on an airplane with a person, but not okay to sit with them in a coffee bar? When there's a whole big area in a coffee bar, mm -hmm. or an airplane... Or in a church. Or in a church. Hello? <laughs> really? So, we could have many conversations on that, right. and many people will disagree with me. Look, if the mask makes you happy, by all means, ha wear your mask to, to feel good about it. But know that this is called placebo. <laughs> so, I deal with physicians, colleagues, friends, family, all the time, and they're all in agreement. But nobody's paying attention to them. And it's very frustrating. Yep. Where did the medical people, why isn't anybody listening to medical people that actually deal with the patients? No. The YouTube videos are turned off and nobody's allowed to listen to it. What is wrong here, people? Wake up. Don't feed into a created fear pool. Don't jump into it. Stay out. Wow. We have this uh, fear, fear mongering out there where everybody is trepidated. You know, in recent times, I've been talking to quite a number of people as a pastor, you know, yes. who come to me and say, I don't know what's wrong with me, please pray for me. And I sit down with them and interview them, and they've gone to the hospitals, they've done all checks, everything looks good, but I just find out that they are emotionally, mentally disoriented, mentally imbalanced because of the fear of COVID-19. And what do they do? They sit in front of TV to wait for the, next, the latest statistics. Right. They're just waiting for the drama. 20 people have just tested positive. 500 people have just tested positive. 30 people have just tested positive. They never tell them, out of those who have tested positive, how many of them have recovered? How many of them died? They, oh, they just don't even have symptoms. Up the number. We all have symptoms. Yeah, of course. Completely asymptomatic. So if 1,000 people test positive, tell me how many recovered, how many died? How many developed but symptoms? Not that. How okay. many? Did, they don't give all the complete statistics. They just give the one that would drive up the fear. And there are many people who can't sleep because of that. And don't you know that we have less car accidents since people have stayed home? <laughs> <laughs> That's the blessing. I mean, <laughs> right? Thank you very much. Our time is up. I wish we could go on and on and on and on. We didn't cover all the areas that we wanted to cover. <laughs> We wanted to know how to become an undermed practitioner, how long does it take to train on it, what qualifications do you need to be able to train on this, and how can one get one. Anyway, just give us your website again, yes. so people can visit the website and connect with you and That's interact right. at that level. Yes, and it's easy to, it's undermed, O for us, for N for name, C for dog, a for Apple, Emma for Mary, E for Edward, D for Dog, dot net. Net for network. On the net. On the net dot dot net. net. Also, binger minus sign institute dot de is also one, and uh, sylviabinder.com is also one, uh, and you will find contact us and you can just send us an email. Right. Anyone can use on the net, anyone can be trained by Zoom, by phone, in person. And uh, it is beneficial to stay well while also overcoming a challenge, staying young, 
living a, a, a great long life and, uh, and and just pulling it all together. This is a great tool to pull nutrition and everything else mm-hmm. beautiful together. So viewers, it's been a great day today. I'm honored that you join us. This is Expose coming to you live from Lagos, Nigeria every Monday on Instagram, YouTube and Facebook simultaneously. And I'm your regular host, Tony Akiyami. Don't forget, what we need is not more medication, but more education. Because the best prescription is knowledge. Have a very pleasant evening. God bless you.